Good morning. Um, good to see you here today. Open source is not always about serious business. It's also about, can also be fun. And today we have two speakers from Germany who will um, introduce the very repetitive project. Which means it's in the feed or something. Uh, that's Nick and that's Eike who's only 50, but um, he will do the most of the talk, and um, please give them a warm round of applause. Okay. So, good morning everyone. Uh, I'll only give you a short introduction to uh, the both of us, and uh, as the Herald already said, we will uh, then pass on to Eike. Uh, we Try to figure out how to split up this talk to into two parts for the two of us, and then uh, we found out that actually I don't want to do most of it. So I will just take a seat after the introduction. And yeah, basically I said to do the show. Okay, so this is Eike. Um, he used to be a student of mine, and uh, recently we got uh, engaged in this uh, quite um, yeah. Output project, I'd say. And I am Nick, I'm working as a software developer at Skype Solutions in Germany. And I am also head of tickets, the German FOSS centric youth organization. And yeah. Okay, that's basically everything I wanted to say. Now, I can please go So this is the overview of um, what, the, today, what today's talk will consist of. Um, first I will talk about what Veripeditus is and uh, how you can use it. Um, then we will look at how to create games with Veripeditus and um, how the framework was developed. Um, after that we will go through the current features and future features and then um, Nick will do the last topic again. Um, so, um, about the uh, rogue. Um, yeah, um, what is Veripeditus? Um, Veripeditus is the free framework for the creation of AR games. IR stands for um, Augmented Reality, which is um, something between virtual reality and normal real life. So um, it, it extends the real life with some functionalities of virtual reality, um, which you may know from games like um, Pokemon Go and Ingress. Um, the framework is uh, mostly built about, uh, around the idea of easy creation for, of games um, and it's also very fast, so you have a whole game on, on the t-shirt, it's a whole game. And um, the best part about it is that you can, um, even beginners can get started with programming uh, with the help of Veripeditus due to its easiness and um, everybody can run servers, you can even write your own clients for it and um, play the games using any mobile browser you have on your smartphone or tablet. Um, how Veripeditus got started? Veripeditus got started mainly because we wanted just to have a project together. Um, we always had some, uh, projects together but they mostly got supported, so um, we didn't have one. And um, with the announcement of Pokemon Go, the augmented uh, reality genre seemed to get popular, and um, so we thought maybe we could get started with that too. Um, Pokemon Go is also known for a privacy hassle, um, 
just like Ingress. Um, and uh, we wanted to create a free alternative for it. Um, we uh, had too many ideas about uh, what a game to create. First we wanted to create an MMORPG style game, then we wanted to create a form of Ingress. Um, so we just thought we want to make it a framework so we can make as many games as we like and um, everybody else can do. Um, after some time, around uh, summer 2016, um, the framework got more and more powerful and we found out that it would be a great idea to just set new goals, one of which is to make a development with the pages as easy as possible. So um, that's one of our goals now, alongside enabling uh, various new skills for augmented reality, which we will come back to later. Um, okay, so before I will uh, go on about uh, Viripeditus and its development, we will um, look at how to make a game with Viripeditus. Um, this is basic, uh, the basic workflow for making a game. So first we plan um, the game objects you want, like um, NPCs and items that uh, spawn on the map. Um, Maybe you want a merchant, then you um, take a merchant and um, set a plan where it's located, how it will work in the game, how it will affect the plot in the game, if one is uh, existent, and um, then you will do the same thing for items and uh, how well they will affect the game, how the player can use them. Um, after planning all the game logic, you put it together in simple type Python classes and uh, implement the logic in uh, the functions and methods. Um, this is uh, the game that's uh, printed on our uh, sweaters. Um, that is basically a simple, it's just a simple Python module and um, I will give you some time to read it and uh, think about it, what the code does, and maybe you can figure it out by yourself, and then I can uh, explain it. So, um, does anyone have any ideas of uh, what this code does and what it could do in the game? Yes? Uh, done by the attribute default image. 
um, principally set it to um, the name of your image without its extension, and uh, it was automatically fetches it from the data uh, from the data um, directory in the game path. Um, the onTalk method in the NPC class um, is triggered whenever you press on the NPC and press uh, the talk button, you will see the UI uh, in the time. And um, then the, the text pops up, I can make our air games. Um, this is how the game looks when played. So um, in the first image you see the map that you see on the screen. Um, the player is the yellow P marker. Um, and, uh, so when moving close to the school, um, the NPC spawns and when clicking on the NPC, um, you see uh, this little window with its name written at the top and the actual buttons at the bottom. And when pressing talk, um, this text message pops up and it will also um, affect the game in uh, various ways like changing the player's inventory and uh, checking its contents, um, make it, uh, changing the player's attributes, making new items and NPCs spawn, stuff like that. Um, this is the camera view and you press on the um, second, uh, the middle button uh, in the uh, top left corner, um, you can change from the view of the camera view um, in which you see objects perspectively morphed uh, at their corresponding positions in the, uh, in the view field of a camera. Um, we had a hard time developing this, uh, it's still not perfect, but it uh, works well most at the time, so um, that's cool. <laughs> Um, now we will come to how uh, the framework was developed. Um, so this is our design. These are our design goals. Uh, as I already said, we wanted to make the game framework uh, as easy to use as possible, um, while still allowing the developers to add arbitrary complex code. Um, because it's not um, a domain-specific language, it's uh, plain Python. You can uh, use the whole Python standard library, any, uh, any other Python modules. So uh, you could use uh, the random module for randomizing its communications and stuff like that. Um, the framework provides all the basic, all of the basic objects you need to develop games, like items, NPCs, and uh, locations. Locations uh, are not implemented yet, but we uh, are working on that. Um, so uh, the player is uh, simply the player that can has it can have special attributes which you can uh, determine at the, at the player class of your game. Um, items are objects that uh, the player can collect. You can store it in the inventory. You can drop them on the map. Um, they will be found on the map. They can trigger events um, just like NPCs. Um, NPCs are. Um, a bit more complex, they um, can help they have, because they have this on top uh, method, they um, can trigger more, much more complex um, game logic. And um, locations are basically NPCs that are invisible and automatically triggered. So you walk into the defined location and then something happens. Um, the technologies used are in the backend uh, Python 3 with um, an SQL alchemy and OSM alchemy ORM um, and a Flask work framework. Um, in the front end, we use HTML5, uh, JavaScript, CSS3, Leaflet, jQuery, and a jQuery UI. Um, we also used AngularJS at the time, but uh, it didn't turn out so well, so we got uh, rid of that again. And we have a simple rest for HTTP RP. Um, what's already there? Yeah. Um, the framework already has, as I already said, uh, items and NPCs, and the player class, uh, but uh, there are uh, more classes planned that you can use in the games. Um, 
you can make your objects spawn at those habitats. So, uh, like, spawn an apple at every tree <coughs> or uh, something in that direction. Um, you can collect uh, items and just talk to NPCs. You can trigger a web like that. So, you can already make um, little stories of your games. Um, we have the map view, the camera view, uh, which we will uh, make a more 3D, 3D view. Um, we want to implement a web VL, 3D models. Um, and uh, we already have a debug mode, which is accessed easily by just adding a question mark if it's true at the end of your VL when uh, using the pages in the browser. <coughs> Um, the Pitfus is currently already used in a public school in Germany at the Hansbergs uh, Virtual Old Time, um, where students uh, work with the Pitfus and weekly code lessons and um, learn, get started with programming uh, that way. Um, they also contribute to the project. Uh, already they um, make issues on GitHub. I don't know if you know GitHub. Um, so, um, they have feature requests which uh, we see, which we will implement. Um, so, uh, everybody can contribute to the project. Um, as I already said, which uh, well, that was the thing that we will come back to, um, Mipitus has, uh, has more use case than just uh, gaming. Um, you can uh, I have made pictures in the education rooms um, to uh, um, as well uh, in the class of the actual old time, you can use it for the coding lessons uh, and get students started with programming more easily. Uh, students are, I guess, more interested in gaming than in, I don't know, some other technologies that are currently used in the uh, science classes and coding lessons. Um, they learn about databases, um, about uh, how object-oriented programming works. Um, you can also use it interdisciplinary. Um, so you could uh, program a game in, um, in the coding lessons and um, use it in uh, history class maybe to um, have some kind of tool head if you are in a um, system that has historical uh, weight, like uh, maybe one, then you can make NPCs and items from there, uh, which tell the children stories and stuff. Um, you can also use it for tourism and attractions if you are, uh, say, have a museum and uh, you want a tour guide, and you can make it a simple tour guide. You can even uh, make the tour guide for the uh, a specific line with the game logic uh, triggered with uh, auto methods and the NPCs. And um, as much as this question, uh, does anyone already have some ideas for the framework? What can be implemented?
<laughs> but uh, everybody can contribute to the project, as I already said. Um, the students already contribute to the project. Um, planned features are um, improved clarification and Yeah. Um, we want to um, implement sound support so that uh, when you use um, items or when you talk to NPCs, um, you can uh, you make hear some feeling sound or something uh, just for some feedback to make it more exciting. Um, we want uh, to make a customizable HMD so you can uh, have. HP bars or something else at the top of the screen or at the bottom, just as you like. Um, we want um, an interactive and live game creator, which, uh, we will, which we have a high priority on. Um, so you can, while testing the game, you can edit the game to the uh, window. <laughs> uh, we want uh, to have it like. Um, other uh, game making programs like game maker and RPG makers so you can uh, click your games together. Um, yeah. And uh, this is actually uh, the game again. Thank you. 
Yeah, if you don't want to miss this, feel free to follow us on GitHub or on Twitter or uh, just send us an email and say, hey, uh, have you really get us something? <laughs> okay, so there are a few places where you can follow the project. <coughs> okay, we have uh, put together some numbers just because uh, we can. Uh, today we have reached exactly 1,000 commits in the repositories, which is a nice number for us. Um, yeah, and uh, it's something in between, uh, something about two, two lines of code in the project already. Yeah, it's quite busy. Okay. So, um, maybe if you want to have growth these numbers, you could possibly read out of them. Now, to the cool part, there is a game that can be played here on campus today and tomorrow, and uh, well, until we drop the database on the night, it will slow again. Um, you can uh, actually try what other people can do with the game. The code is already online on GitHub. There, we will just uh, put together a showcase for the basic features of the framework. You can start the game by going to the, uh, the non play character, the NPC that is uh, standing outside the exit of building K, I think, this exit there. And you can talk to the NPC and he will, and he will tell you what you have to do to finish the game. Um, we do this uh, firstly so you can have a bit of uh, fun with it and see what it does. Um, and also to find bugs, of course, because uh, I hope there will be a few testers with different devices. Our budget is very limited, so we can only test with uh, like two or three different mobile devices, which is very sad, especially uh, while mobile browsers are not in such a compatible and good condition. Anyway, um, if you play the game and you find any issues, please don't uh, just get bored and uh, stop playing. So please actively report to us so we can really, really use this conference to um, to flatten the path to the to the better release and really make it good. We know that the camera view only works in Firefox on Android, which is sad, but we couldn't get it fixed because we we're really Every single damn mobile browser does things differently in regards of the video screens. And uh, we decided to uh, target one browser in a well working fashion and not just support so many browsers, and then it uh, looks good to that. <coughs> okay, if you find any issues, please ping us with an email or Twitter or something, or uh, just find us. Uh, we might be hanging out with these. Uh, uh, how to oversee, how to overlook statues somewhere on campus. Okay, this would be really great. We really appreciate that. Okay, and again, you can find the complete code of the game you can play here. Plus, you can use this for uh, educational purposes, you can use it for student purposes too. Okay. The last we can say is a, bit, uh, thank you, is a big thank you for attending this talk. We all also have to thank a few projects and people who helped us create the repetitors uh, which were listed above. And for those of you who wonder how you get all the street map data into a Python program or into a web application in a, in a quite um, easy manner, in a manner that uh, needs uh, really low resources. Um, I can invite you to a uh, small, well, uh, which should have become a workshop now, it's uh, a small, it has become a small introduction in the ge geospatial lab room, I think it's age 20 to 40. Uh, tomorrow there will be an introduction into OSM Alchemy, which is a library that bridges the scale alchemy or our own system with OpenStreetMap to make OpenStreetMap live data look just like in a spell database. If you are interested in this, feel free to join us tomorrow. Yeah, okay. So that's it for our talk. We have still a bit of time left for questions. I think um, I will pass the microphone on my side, I think, and we can do a question round if you have anything you want to ask. Yes, hello. Um, the very Redditus project looks um, awesome for high level.
level of creation and creating your uh, like creating games immediately when you get an idea and getting uh, people involved immediately in the creation. Uh, however, I'm more interested in the advanced API that you mentioned. Uh, is there like um, some kind of API for low-level connection uh, that doesn't define this uh, like primitives like player and item and so on, which are uh, sort of game specific? Okay. Um, well, there is. We, we quite follow the Python principle there. There is an, an API that does a lot of abstraction, and you can use something like player dot drop item, and then it will drop the item that you pass as an, as an argument. If you don't want to do this, if you want to do low-level programming, you just use the Python object from the framework, and you can really use all of it as fast as you like. We don't hide any any of the any of the code anywhere, you can just use whatever Python code and Python library you like, introspect the framework and um, yeah, just, just put in everywhere you like. So there is not an advanced API, but we do, not hide, we do not hide the complexity of the framework so you can use all of it. Does that answer your question or did I get it wrong? How do you come up with this name? Maybe just a thing. Okay. Um, was it missing in the slide? Okay. Um, the Herald already said that it uh, might have to do something with feet. Yes, and uh, it actually has. It's from uh, Veritas, which is Latin for the truth, the reality, and uh, Hades, which is Latin for feet. So it basically means you can move around with your feet in reality. So. Hello. <clears throat> what kind of interactions do you support with locations? I, I ask because I tried to implement a couple of years ago um, when I was playing Ingress a uh, virtual bike racing game. Um, and for that I wanted to be able to pass through the locations and uh, to test like, at what angle and what, what direction a player was coming through a location and just trigger a fence based on that. Did you create a location in Ingress for that kind of interaction? Right now, you can only place items and NPCs in uh, locations you like, and you can interactively interact with them. But um, on the roadmap, there's uh, an item that says we want to have uh, locations that are just triggered by, by uh, passing them in any, in any defined radius. Um, but uh, I didn't uh, acoustically understand uh, all of your question. Was it uh, that you want to, or to also find out the geometry uh, of the player moving through some, uh, some rectangle or something? Yes, I um, can imagine that any kind of race game, I have checkpoints in order to make sure that someone's passing along the course of the correct angle rather than just hitting checkpoints in any order. <laughs> so this basically boils down that you want the history of the, of the player's location and uh, Um, sounds interesting. Please uh, visit GitHub and if you want an issue, if you like, we will take this into account. Thank you. Um, maybe with some additions to it, but uh, most of them 
turn out to be moving towards the browser uh, way to do the things. We had an Android application that wrapped, um, that wrapped a web view and uh, styled it a bit and displayed the HTML5 application which we had to drop because the Android developers decided to not provide access to the device orientation which made the camera view not work. And uh, they just didn't support it in uh, web view applications. We are not sure, but as anyone, as the API is open and everyone can create an application, we are very open to someone creating native web applications, but we have no plans to do this ourselves in the future. Okay. Uh, How is it with documentation? Is it already easy to start yourself and have a look through like, documentation or maybe some other coding examples or kind of NPCs and items you have? The documentation uh, right now consists of the PYDoc documentation and the source files, which can be extracted with the PYDoc tool. Um, we want to put it together a uh, concise API documentation from this and also some examples for every single item that we had to do now to use with, uh, for the framework. And there are at least two fully functioning example games on GitHub linked in our organization page, which are uh, partially self-explaining, partially uh, well commented, which you can learn from. With the first beta release, of course, there will be a concise documentation page. Thank you.